friends. Hi there friends, I'm Elizabeth of Earl Grey Crochet and this is my December monthly update. Or in this case not so monthly as I did skip last month, I didn't feel like I had a whole lot to share with you guys. Um, and yeah, looking at my notes that I scribbled down last month and then adding them to this month because I'll chat about October and November, what I've been up to. Um, yeah, I really haven't been up to very much at all. Um, the cat is just being very curious about one of the things I'm going to show you. Don't eat it. Don't eat it, buddy. Maybe I will show you now and they'll hang it back up. So yesterday, my church did a ladies brunch and wreath making workshop. Often there's like a, at this time of year, um, like a gingerbread house making thing for women, which is nice. It's fun. I love gingerbread. Um, although I can make that at home, whereas, and decorate it however. And you know, I often like to do like Christmas trees and that sort of thing. Whereas in the house workshops, um, the gingerbread is already cooked for you and you just put the house together and decorate it. Um, so yes, we did a wreath making workshop. So a florist came and she had all the wreaths and she had all these pieces. And this is what I put together yesterday with what she brought along. There are a few things I decided not to use because um, she had a good variety of things. And it was just really cool to see how using the same, most of the same basic materials, everyone had, yes, yeah, such different wreaths. That's very cool. Um, and it's good to be looking forward to Christmas. We've had some of our lights up for a little few weeks now. Um, but yes, I love Christmas at the moment. Um, not so much as a teenager. I got very mad about people starting decorating back in, or well, the shops starting decorating back in October or whenever. Um, but yeah, this year I was itching to start decorating very early. Okay, so this is this little wreath I've made yesterday. At the moment it's hanging where um, I have a crochet wreath that I often hang up. Um, at the moment this is hanging in that place. Just we don't really have that many places to hang it. So um, yeah there's like I don't even know what anything's called. These are gold painted leaves. There's some of these red painted leaves with some green glitter which I really liked. Um, yeah, and then some of these little flowers. Again, I do not know what they are called, but there we go. I'm going to go hang this up, um, because if I put it down here, the cat will destroy it. So I'll be right back. Hi, buddy. What you doing? Are you on camera? So you guys have met Adolin before. Hey, good boy. Okay, you go sit on your chair. So, I don't have any new finished objects from this past month. I didn't finish anything in November. Um, not that I can remember anyway, not that I can see on Instagram. I might have and then just forgotten about it. But in October, I finished my cropped So Faded, um, which I'm super happy with. It's in, I can't remember what size, but it's the size up from, oh, I've made myself some breakfast. And of course the cat wants to eat it because he loves Greek yogurt. Um, it's the size up from the purple one that I made myself and it's the same size that I made my mum. Um, so it's a bit shorter. I think I have most of the details on Ravelry. I'll double check to make sure, um, yeah, that there's lots of details on there for you. Um, if you want to have a look at it. Uh, so I use Ren and Ollie yarn for this one, which I am very obsessed with at the moment. Um, this top colour, the light colour with the pink and other coloured flecks is Parfait. The second colour is I think salt and pepper this one and then the bottom one is smitten kitten which I am loving um it's just I just love the I don't know the tones of this yarn it's really nice um yeah I don't know why I started recording before I ate my breakfast, but here we are. I just really wanted to get this done, I guess. My other finished object is, I did film the making of this, but 
I haven't done anything with that footage. It was going to be a time lapse thing. So I made this all in. This is the metamorphic dress. And so it's double sided. Um, you can wear it with this linen kind of side out or the pink side out. And I made it all in one day. Um, we have an October long weekend, so the Monday is a public holiday. So I made it on that Monday. So I just got this fabric from Spotlight. Um, it was 30% off at the time because I was like, if I'm going to do this, I have to buy it before the sale ends because it's effectively two dresses worth of fabric, I suppose, unless you were going to line it. But um, yes, so it wasn't cheap buying this fabric, but that's what sewing and a lot of crafting is. But it has some inseam pockets on this side and I decided to do the pink in there because I thought that was pretty cute. And it comes down kind of just about to my knees. And then if I flip it out. So yeah, the linen colored one is, I think it's 100% linen. And then the pink is a cotton linen blend. And yeah, I'm kind of really into the pink at the moment. And the pink side has square pockets on the front. Um, it's actually cute. And it has this like high-low hemline where you can see the linen underneath which I really like. Only problem with this is it was really hard to get a neat hem on the linen. So you can see the inside of that hem, um, which you know what? No one is going to be looking that closely at my hem, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, so I shared on Instagram this morning, like kind of just my roundup photos from the past month which used to, I used to get nine quite easily. The last few months I've been looking at, I only get four, which is fine. I'm just not posting on Instagram that much. Um, not doing anything that much, apparently. I have, I've got to remind myself, I've been doing other things. I've been, we bought a Switch a couple of months ago, and so I've been playing a couple of games on there, um, including Link's Awakening, because they redid that for the Switch. I think it was originally on the Game Boy. Um, and also one called... Dragon Quest Builders 2. And I really like both of those. It's hard to swap between them because the controls for each of them, some of the things are opposite, which means that in one game you try to jump and you attack an enemy, or in the other game you try to attack an enemy and you jump instead. Um, which makes it a little bit hard to swap back and forth. So I try to just play one. Um, anyway, enough of that. That's my um, yeah grand total of two finished objects that I finished in October and not November. Um, so, yes, I've been playing video games this past month. I've been doing a little bit of other things, just kind of slow progress. Um, I've been adding to my teacups cross stitch. Um, I think it's nearly done. I mean, I say that. I think I've done all the teacups, unless I'm missing something. I'm going to have to double check because there's multiple places in which I kind of just like somehow missed one stitch in a colour. Um, so I'll double check it and then if you can see here there's like some background stuff that I've started doing. I did this ages ago. I'm going to have to rethink it because I actually, these this row of teacups and this row of teacups are too close together so I don't actually have enough space here to follow the pattern properly. So I'm going to have to fudge it somewhere because clearly I'm not redoing a whole row of teacups. So I'm thinking I'll undo this part and then get the background for all these correct and then just have these one row off, um, which I think will work. And then after that, after we do all the background cross stitching, which will cover all of this white space mostly, then there's at the bottom it will say the art of tea. And then there's like all these little words that go underneath each, each teacup, like create, mend, grow. Which, look, it's a bit cliche, but I really like it. Teacups and making and, yeah. Oh, and of course, I'm forgetting about all the, like, I think it's back stitching we have to do. So, it looks like it's nearly done, but there's still a bit to go. Well, it's alright. It's a good, I find it's a good summer project, and it's a good uh, project I don't have to sit there and think about too much. Probably the stuff that's left I'll have to think about more than what I've done so far. Oh yeah, there's some bits up there where I've only done the one slant. I haven't crossed a stitch, so I'm gonna have to go in and fix that. 
but that's fine, not surprising. Um, yeah, so that's how that's going. Um, I have, I did make a lot of progress on this in October. Um, I think I did most of this top bit. Um, I'd already started the base kind of bits. Um, yeah, so down here I started with just this one teacup, probably I think the beginning of the year, and I did a whole teacup and then I moved on to the next one kind of thing. Whereas here I ended up doing, putting in the grid of um, every 10 stitches that's on the pattern, and then I was able to like say get one colour and do that one colour on a bunch of the teacups. Um, and that kind of gave me a bit more of a base to work off to finish off the teacups, which was really good. So I was able to pull out those um, marking every 10 boxes stitches and yeah I'll show you the back it's not super neat but hey it's pretty neat there's just some threads all over the place um, yeah so I'm enjoying that there's a bit of thread on there so yeah again that's another project that's just comes along slowly it'll be done eventually one day maybe I haven't decided if I want to try to frame it myself I think there's tutorials online and I do have a frame that might fit. I just picked it up at the op shop one time, um, which for those who don't know in America, um, an op shop is what we call a thrift shop or, a th sorry, that's a thrift shop. I don't know, a second hand shop. It's an op shop, which I think is short for opportunity shop. Um, I also, what is this? Oh, that's funny. Um, you know my knitted wrap, I mean slowly, slowly adding rows to it. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see anything different. Um, you know, I'll show you it anyway. I just I really love the way this just slowly progresses. And yeah, if you haven't seen this one before, it's just made with a whole bunch of minis and I just strap to change um, from one colour to the next. It's not a gradient yarn or anything like that. It's just all these different minis. Um, most of them are from the uh, advent calendar I got last year from Hannah at Circus Tonic Handmade. Some of them are from other places I've collected along the way. Um, so I think at the moment I'm striping these two colours. This yarn is from Mel at Mahogany Turtle Fibres. She has, I think, recently stopped dyeing yarn and is focusing on designing patterns. For crochet um, and this one is from the advent calendar I got last year from Hannah at Circus Tonic Fibers Circus Tonic Handmade um, and she's also stopped dyeing yarn recently um, she's moving from Sydney to Adelaide and um, she's she's taking break but it may um, be more than just a break so that's both a little bit sad but as I mentioned before, I'm a bit obsessed with Ren and Ollie yarn. There's always lots of different options. Um, and I think I've mentioned before that in January we will be moving. Um, we'll be moving to Sydney, which is very exciting. Um, a little bit daunting, but most exciting. Um, so we'll be closer to a few places like Skane Sisters, which is nice. Um, and I learned recently, my husband Matt, hasn't ever been to Skein Sisters with me. I've been there a few times, um, but yeah, he hasn't been. So one of the first things we do when we move, I'm gonna drag him out to Skein Sisters and show him how beautiful all the yarn is. I love it there. It's just, we're not super close, but we're a lot, we'll be a lot closer than we are currently, which is very exciting. Um, I always seem to zoom through everything I have to talk about, but well, I don't like to sit here and, I don't know. Oh, there's a bit of yarn on my lap. Um, okay, I do have a couple more things to show you. I think in the last two months, I did get some more yarn from, um, well, I was gonna order it from Spotlight, because Spotlight had a, I think a 40% off sale on yarn. Um, but I mistimed it, the sale ended before I ordered the yarn. But then I ended up ordering the yarn from Rose's Knitting Centre, which is, um, so Rose owns her small business, I think somewhere out west New South Wales. I just gotta show you guys something. Yeah. 
Isn't he cute? Sitting on my dress. This is where he was sitting before when he was trying to um, destroy the wreath. Um, anyway, there you go. Let's see if I can frame this up again. <laughs> Hi, buddy. You good boy. Um, Rose Knitting Center. Yeah, so I ordered some yarn. I ordered, I think, five balls of the Peyton's Baby Dreamtime Reno Fall Ply in this mustard color. I really like this yarn. I've worked with it a few times, both in the four ply and the eight ply, and they're both lovely and beautiful. Um, they're kind of expensive for like spotlight or shop bought yarns, but they are still much cheaper than say like indie dyed yarns. Like it's it's 100% Australian merino, um, so it's only 50 grams, and so I think the spotlight price normally is $10. And so at the 40% sale, it's down to $6. The thing is, Ro, when I missed out on a sale, I found out that at Rose Knitting Center, who I've ordered from before, um, her price is $6.50. So I was much happier to support her rather than um, buy from Spotlight in their sale. So that worked out really well. I bought five balls of this, um, which I have started knitting up. Look, it doesn't look like much at the moment. But I want to make a little baby cardigan for... I have lots of friends having babies at the moment. So, yeah, like I said, doesn't look like much. It just looks like I'm practicing my knitting. But that's right. I'm a bit... Edges are a bit funny. But I suppose they'll be in seams and we'll see how that goes. So I couldn't find a pattern that I was super happy with. So I'm kind of like going off dimensions in a pattern that I found. And then making my own pattern based off that. To hopefully be an appropriate size for a baby. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. And, um, so I got five balls of the mustard, and then I also got, mm, I don't know how many balls of, uh, I don't know, maybe ten balls of this, I think it's called Donkey. Um, it's this gorgeous kind of grey-brown colour. And so I started, if you've been on my Instagram, you've definitely seen this. This is my Candelaria cardigan, and so this is by... Oh, I can't remember her first name. Um, but Nomad Stitches is her Instagram name. Um, and she has some really beautiful crochet garment patterns. Um, and this one I just thought was really lovely. It just, it looks like a really cozy cardigan. So yeah, work it top down and then you work the body for a bunch more rows. I might make it a bit more cropped than um, in the pattern recommends but we'll see how we go how I'm feeling as we go because I can try it on as we go and now do the sleeves I'm gonna do full length sleeves I think <laughs> um, and then I think you come back and do a ribbing around the neck and down the sides and it's just a really nice cardigan um, there's these little eyelet designs um, that's falling out stay um, there was a little bit issue in so this is the size medium um, she has, I think, a pretty big range of sizes, so I think she's gone to a lot of effort to be really size inclusive in this one, and um, possibly so for others, I'm th or it might be a work in progress, I'm not sure. But yeah, I really, it's, it's kind of hard to see the designs, but yeah, there's like some little eyelets up there, and then half, like the bottom half of this design, which again, you'll see better once it's blocked, and then this whole thing, and then again, the same but the top half kind of deal. I hope that makes sense. You can see what I'm talking about if you see it. So yeah, this is the Candelaria Cardigan. It's on Ravelry by No Bone Stitches. Again, I have my details on the Ravelry project, on my Ravelry projects page. So I'll link my Ravelry projects page down below because look, I think we all know by now how lazy I am at writing up show notes or whatever. Um, I enjoy it sometimes. Sometimes I make really beautiful show notes on my blog. Um, but the best place to get information is on my Ruffle Room Projects page because I try to update that and keep it all really helpful for you. Um, I think that's oh, more or less everything. I think back in October I did add a little bit to my Bantam wrap by Deanne, I did Day Designs. Um, but not much to show you. So if you want to check that out, go have a look at my video from the beginning of October. Um, even though I haven't been making much, I keep spending money on things. So 
I also ordered more Ren and Ollie yarn because she had a um, update. I'd previously ordered. Try to get this out. Oh, I lost the tag in the shelf. I previously had two of these, but then I was very concerned that it wasn't going to be enough to make what I want to make. So I ordered a third one when she had her update because it was out of stock. This is the peony on her sock base. Um, so it's really nice. It has some of the similar colours to, say, like this Minkin. Um, so it's nice. So I now have three skeins of this. And also... I kind of, look, I don't have a specific, I do have a specific plan for this, but we'll see. And then I also have, this is some of my leftover yarn from the sofa that I made for my mum. So this is Wild Mushroom. And I decided to get, I ordered, it might be a bit excessive, four more skeins of this. So I have four and a half skeins of Wild Mushroom. Um, and I have some thoughts about what I want to make. But I haven't been able to find a pattern for what I want to make. Um, so we'll see how we go. I'll hold off. This is not like uh, the next project I'm going to make. Because I have so many things I want to start. But um, I'm trying to finish other things first. But it's just not It's just not happening. Um, yes, yeah, so this last month or two. I've been playing some video games. And that's been fun. But I've just... I have this itch to make things, to knit and crochet, but then whenever I sit down to do it, a lot of the time I'm just like feeling a bit meh about whatever I'm making. And so while I'm trying to finish things before I start new things, maybe today I would just start something new because I enjoy it. So we'll see. Um, maybe check out my Instagram to see what I get up to this afternoon. Just enjoying having my little cat buddy around. You're beautiful, gorgeous boy. Yeah. You like my dress? Um, but yes, yeah, so my thoughts about this. I want to kind of make... Um, so I could make... One of my thoughts is I could make... Um, I think Hohi Locatelli has a... I don't know what it's called. But there's... She kind of has a pullover which has some pockets. Um, so it might be nice. I want to say it's called the granite something, but don't take my word on that. I don't know what it's called. Um, another thought is I make a cardigan, but I want to knit it in the round because I like the stockinette, but I don't like purling. Um, so I want to knit it in the round and then steak it, which I haven't done before. So I do, I would do like a test steak, um, but I've seen heaps of people do it. Um, it seems to have good success, but again, I'm not exactly sure what I want to, what design elements I want to have in that. Um, it's not something I would design myself. Not Definitely not knitting. Um, so I'd want to find maybe a pullover pattern that's just one colour, maybe has some nice details to it, and then I could stick somehow, which I've seen people do before. But <laughs> that's not happening anytime soon. We're coming into summer here anyway. So I do have a top that I started knitting a year ago in I think a linen, silk, and hemp blend. Could be wrong about one of those. Um, that I would like to get finished. But it, it's just, I'm up to a part where there's lots of pearl rows and I'm struggling, well I was a year ago because I haven't touched it in ages. I'm um, struggling to count my rows in the particular design and yes. We'll see if I can pick that up, but maybe today I'll just start something new that I'm excited about. We'll see. Um, oh, I do have something else to show you guys. So, my lovely sister and I, I have one younger sister, um, that's all of my siblings. She has a few tattoos and she decided a while ago that we should get matching tattoos. I was a bit hesitant, um, because I don't have any tattoos, or I didn't have any tattoos. Um, so this was going to be my first. And so we talked for a long time, like it's been in the works for probably two years at least, I don't know. So we have, we've had a few different ideas over the time, and then I found a tattoo artist I liked on Instagram. I suggested it to her, and she, my sister was happy with it, um, well with the designer, the artist. Um, and then based on some of her designs, I, you know, 
gave some ideas to my sister about what we could do. Um, so we were thinking maybe like two flowers, um, just kind of to represent the two of us, I guess. Um, we weren't certain what flowers we would want. We're not like super into roses or whatever, like. And so we end up going with two little sprigs of lavender. Um, I really love lavender, I love the smell and the color and the plant, just everything about it. Um, also, Matt and I, when we went to Tasmania at the beginning of the year, back in January, um, we went to some lavender farms there, which were just absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, we like, tr I tried like lavender ice cream and lavender scones and cream on lavender scones, <laughs> lavender cream, or lavender tea. Um, it was amazing. The, the lavender ice cream was probably the best. It sounds weird, but it was so good. So, my sister and I, on Monday this week, we finished work and we went and got our tattoos and so I have two little sprigs of lavender on my arm. Needs a bit of moisturizer right at the moment. I did moisturize it last night but it could do with some more. Um, but yeah, and my sister got hers on her ribs um, and yeah, now we have little matching lavender tattoos which is really nice. Um, people keep asking me about the meaning. It's not like super meaningful I like lavender so yeah it doesn't have a specific meaning but um, a few months ago I was reading part of Matthew chapter 6 and this is kind of when I came up with the idea for having a tattoo of flowers um, and so this part of Matthew chapter 6 uh, Jesus is saying therefore I tell you do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body or what you put on it is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Yeah, so tattoo is not like directly related to that, but I can, came up with the idea reading that passage thinking it'd be nice to have um, just a let, little tattoo of some flowers of some sort, just as a reminder. Um, yeah, just a reminder to myself about being less anxious and um, yeah, seeking first God's kingdom. Um, so I wouldn't say that's what it means. But that's kind of how I came up. Well, thought it would be a good idea. Flowers, of course. I like flowers. They're nice and generic. Like no one. Well, yeah. So we go. And of course, yes, I do spend a lot of time putting into my clothes. I knit and sew and etc. Um, but I suppose it's more about yeah, not being anxious about these things and having my priorities right. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling about all these things and I hope you guys have a lovely Christmas. Um, yeah, and stay crafty.